Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm going to be showing you the new and improved way to build with conversational flow, including a new feature that hasn't even been announced yet. I'll start by showing you the building blocks of conversational flow and then break down exactly why people struggle to get conversational flow working. And then I'll show you how I fix that. And if you stick around at the end of the video, I'll reveal a secret AI tool no one's talking about that literally builds and tests your conversational flow agents for you. I'm super excited. Let's dive right in. To start, I'll explain every single node and every single option here and what they practically mean for you. Starting with the conversation node. The conversation node is kind of like a single prompt agent inside of this conversational flow. That's the best way to understand it. You have two options, prompting and static sentence. And when you're prompting it, it really does function like a single prompt agent because you can say something like ask for the caller's email and phone. But then a feature I think is even cooler, which single prompt doesn't offer is just the static sentence mode which will read out exactly what we write inside of the nose. Something like, thank you for calling on a recorded line. Now, in a single prompt agent, thank you for calling on a recorded line could be interrupted by the caller. But in this case, with this little button here, maybe you spotted it, we can actually set it up. So not only will it always say the static sentence verbatim, but it will consistently stop all interruptions while it's reading out that sentence. There's more to this, so stay with me. We've got also the transitions, which if you don't understand these, you're gonna have a lot of trouble with conversational flow and it comes back to more of logic. I mean, there's two different options for people. So the user needs to return the package which in that case, it would go over to a cer certain node that would handle that request, or the user needs to check the order status. So in that case, the user would do something else. Well, in both cases, we can write out a node that would handle it. What is your order number? Here's where things get interesting. In this case right here, we can have it define a transition. The user provides their order number and then just move on to the next node. But watch what happens if I talk to this assistant and I say, this is where a lot of people get hung up when they're building conversational flow. And we'll just do the text chat version. This is really nice, by the way. It's a nice way to test it. Thanks for calling. Um, I wanna check the order status, please. And now it's gonna bring me over here. What's my order number? I don't have it. Watch what happens. Because I don't have the order number, this transition will not be invoked, which effectively will keep the user or the caller stuck at this node, unable to escape. This is what I call node prison. You cannot escape the node because there's no defined transition for the caller's unique scenario. And so this is where it's really important that you have something called global nodes. A global node is a node that any node can jump to no matter where it's located. So imagine that in our little scenario here, I have another node and this node kind of exists on its own. It's like over here, call it the node that is for call transfer. So moving on to our other node function, this is a transfer call node. We're gonna set it to be a global node just like so. And we'll describe the condition by which other nodes can jump to this node. The caller is upset and does not have his order number or just wants to talk to an agent, a human to be precise. We can even include global node examples. This is helpful for fine tuning the conversation, something we'll get into in a second. So now we're going back to our scenario here. What happens when I go and test the agent? This is something I see a lot of people struggling with, so I, I feel like compelled to address it. Thanks for calling on a recorded line. What's my status? Now watch what happens. I don't have it. And then tool invokes transfers call and it just jumps successfully over to this node. We've successfully escaped node prison. And that's what I really want to drive home is when you're building these conversational flow agents, have to, have to, have to make sure you map out the logic in such a way where there is no scenario in which node prison will happen. Moving on to the function node. The function node's kind of just like what you see in single prompt. You can add any function you want here. Check calendar availability and book on the calendar are both some that I use. Pretty much goes without saying, it's just like the other one. So if, if I were to put check calendar availability, hit save, add, this is what it looks like. Just really quick, if someone were to book an appointment, check appointment times, it would then check calendar availability 
once availability is returned. When it comes to functions, by the way, it's important that you either select waiting for the function to finish before transitioning to the next node or not. Um, and some functions you want to and others you don't. So in this case, if you wait for the results, it's gonna add a little bit to the latency, obviously. But at the same time, you don't want this transitioning over to the next node if it's gonna start giving out appointment available times when it actually hasn't figured out what times are actually available because it didn't complete its function. So you wanna make sure that you give it ample time in this case for checking availability, just wait for the, re the result. Going back to these options here, so you can also have a skip response module, which let's say you don't actually want the user to talk. You don't wanna have them interact with this node whatsoever. You just want the node to do some internal processing and move on. You, that's when you would toggle skip response. It just jumps to the next node and that's all it does. It's very simple. And then LLM, this is nice too. So you can choose a different LLM depending on the node. The only time I practically would use this is if I've also added a unique node knowledge base. Now, this is really nice because in single prompt, you're basically, if you have a big knowledge base, you're just dumping everything right into that agent. So you've got a huge knowledge base. Well, guess what? That knowledge base is going to be queried with every single possible turn back and forth when talking. And it's just a complete waste of query. It costs more money. In this case, what I can do is only query the knowledge base at a specific node for a specific reason. Examples could be customer support, questions about their product. And in that case, you might want to use a smarter LLM. Access to 4.5 Sonnet, which I found to excel at detail-oriented tasks even more than five. Um, and in that case, that's when I would actually use this particular feature. So, so, so that's pretty nice. And you can add this knowledge base right in here. Fine tuning examples, the last little setting. As you know, when you're trying to get an agent to perform a lot better, you might know this, the agent is going to need lots of examples, um, especially if the use cases are a little bit, what would you say, hard to judge. So like there we have two options here, fine tuning a conversation or fine tuning the transition. In fine tuning a conversation, a user can say something and then we will define how we'd like the agent to respond. Say a user says, I am very upset right now with you. Well, we could give sorry to hear that I am trying my best. And now the agent will have a predefined way of responding to a query that we may not hear every single day. I think a more important like practical way that I use this is just fine tuning the transition. I find that transitions can be the hardest part with conversational flow. Just if there's any ambiguity either with your own English language or just the way in which circumstantially this agent is set up. I have a F-150. Um, the agent would then say, okay, is that a commercial vehicle or for personal use? Then we could then transition it to another node whose sole job is to classify personal versus commercial trucks. So just an idea. You can use this scenario fine tuning the transition for just about anything, especially when you have those more complex edge scenarios where things can be misinterpreted. Moving on, a press digit function. So this is a little cool function here. Uh, you'd only use this if you're doing outbound calling, but like for instance, say this agent is calling a company and has to navigate the IVR, you could then give it an instruction to navigate to the human agent of customer support department, um, just like the default one is right here. We could have it set as a global node. You can do just about anything with it. Okay, logic split node. How would you use this one? What it does is it just breaks breaks up more complex logic so that we can better understand it, troubleshoot it. So for instance, like in this case, imagine that you're checking the appointment times. And if there are appointment times available, um, and let's also do something else. Check the appointment times and ask the patient's date of birth. In this case, what we would do, we could do two things. We wanna first confirm that the patient has provided their date of birth and that there are appointment times available. Then we can transition to the next node. However, that's a kind of a lot to put into this one transition. So what we'll do is just put one of them. So if there are appointment times available, then we will go ahead and transfer to the logic split node from which we can then transfer, define the condition, date of birth, is captured or date of birth is not captured. So appointment times are available, but the date of birth may or may not be captured. Um, in either case, we'll have to do something different. So in this case, date of birth not captured. So this is just in, in practicality how we do this in practicality. Passport. Okay, 
So those are two different cases and then else. Agent transfer is very nifty. What this does is it allows us to transfer to another agent in our retail AI account. You might be wondering why not just use call transfer because you could transfer to another agent that way. You don't wanna have to deal A with higher latency, waiting for the call transfer to be placed, B having to get another number, which costs money and time, and C if it's all in retail AI, it's super easy to transfer data over seamlessly. Like I can transfer all of the post call analysis right into this agent just because it's all in retail AI, something I wouldn't be able to do with just a simple call transfer function. This is a perfect example of this. Missions. So this is just like a master routing prompt that you can use to transfer to the right agent depending on the right condition. So hello, this customer support department. So if the customer needs to return a package, it will transfer over, hey, I'll actually transfer you over to Julia and it will transfer to Julia. If the user needs to check the order status, it will transfer you over to Max, which is just another agent, a single prompt agent we built over in Retail AI. Um, and then third, if the user needs to create a new support ticket, we will then get your name extract the name and bring it right over here to another agent that we have in retail AI. And that brings me over to my next node right here. I'll go back to SMS, which is extract a variable. If I hit this node, click this button, and I can define the variable name and the description, kind of like post call analysis. Put the name of the user and then the type of data that it is. Once we hit save, I can then reference that data. So if I put in, can you tell me your name, please? The name is captured, it goes over to the extract variable function. This all runs almost simultaneously in actuality with this. Extracts the name. We can then use the dynamic variable of their name because it's extracted and manipulated however we want. With a static sense, it's really nice. We can place it with fine tuned precision, something you'd never be able to to do in single prompt. And on top of that, we can take that dynamic variable and transfer it naturally, it already does, over to the agent transfer function in our single prompt. SMS, pretty much axiomatic. I mean, you can put in send caller and SMS confirming appointment. If it's sent successfully, then great. If it's not, then do this. Static sentence or prompt both work. Same thing, you can set up SMS. I have a video on it right over here. MCP, I won't cover that right now. And then the ending variable. Um, it's important that you have an ending variable set up in various places because you might want to end the call. And if you don't have an end the call function for every single possible outcome where end the call might need to be invoked, then again, your node will get stuck. You might be like, Mark, when should I use conversational flow versus single prompt? I have three main rules I use first. There's conveniently a cap at 3,500 tokens in your single prompt after which you start incurring a surcharge. When you get that big, it might be a good sign that that you need to transition over to conversational flow. Second, if you're doing a lot of function calling, conversational flow is just gonna be a lot more reliable. Third, if you notice that the agent is breaking down in single prompt, it's supposed to be following certain questions verbatim and it's forgetting to ask some of them. That is a huge sign you should be using conversational. Flow. What are the benefits to conversational flow over single prompt? A lot higher reliability, a lot more cost effective. It only reads the specific node that it's dealing with which does save money over time. And lastly, conversational flow is just a lot easier to troubleshoot. You can isolate the nodes that are having problems if you are, versus in single prompt, it's just one gigantic mess. And so for those reasons, I will use conversational flow only if the three conditions above, at least one of them is satisfied. Otherwise it's overkill and it's a waste. You have a global prompt. When would you wanna use this? Global prompting is important to at least give the agent some form of identification. The thinking is actually going to go on under these underlying nodes. But the identification of the agent, its overall persona, the way it talks, things like its rules that it never breaks, those can all go here. Its role, rules, steps, and skills. The last and most recent feature that Retail AI has just come out with is called components. You have library components and agent components. They both work a little bit differently. Basically, they work as mini flows, so mini clusters of nodes that can be used across all of your agents, templatized, and can be invoked in any of your conversational flows conversation. So I can set one up right now and just show you what it looks like. I've actually went ahead and built one. This is, if I edit the component, you can see it's just a tiny cluster of nodes and it's solving something that I have to deal with frequently. And that's when you'd practically use this. So for instance, when I'm transferring a call, whenever the transfer call fails, I need to have nodes following up with it. So for some reason, the call is not transferring. Let's try calling you back. Are you free in the afternoon? It then figures out if the person is free, then we'll call you back, exit. If they're not free, okay, we'll call back later, done, exit. Now, this just starts off. This begin here is not like the typical begin. It stands for the begin of the component. It just gets triggered as soon as it reaches this component. And you have to make sure though, um, that all of your nodes reach an exit component. Otherwise this won't work. But once you exit out of it, transfer. And if I reference this, the entire thing underneath goes through those set of nodes, just like so. Goes through and then comes out 
on the other side. So it's just a quick way I think I get to organize your notes and it's nice because I can just click one button and now they're all across my library. Now agent components is the same thing except it's limited to only just this agent that we're looking at. So I've just showed you how to build this out step by step, all the building blocks and tools you need. But this is actually my biggest complaint about building conversational flow with retail AI or any other platform is that it just is so time consuming. I don't want to sit and build this thing from scratch, especially when we have AI vibe coding incredible websites and I couldn't find anyone else who's done this. I got my AI to actually build out a full conversational flow agent consistently very well and for any use case. I'm using Claude because I couldn't get this to work with ChatGPT. What I have are a few special prompts I've built and what I'm going to do is actually prompt the agent to build me a client ready conversational flow system. Um, I'm going to take a client requirement document and say build me a convo flow agent according to these examples. Don't make any duplicate edge um, or IDs and just follow client requirement document. And now I'm going to paste that document in. Right. And so this is basically a document for handling inbound customer calls for malfunctioning electronic devices. So I'll take this entire thing of JSON, put it in here to just a JSON editor online. Anyone you can find will work. Paste it, hit download right here save to disk. So I'll just go right in over here, hit import and drag and drop the file that we just exported, just like so. And boom, success. So if we check out our agent, look what Claude cooked up for us. We love you, Claude. Look at this. I mean, that is incredible. That is, and it works too. I've been testing all the different ones it's been creating for me and they are like logically sound, but also technically sound. Not only do they have a global prompt, you can edit this global prompt, but they include post call analysis is all fully populated. Like it even included a fine tuning examples in some of them. So we can even test and just talk to the agent to show you that it's legit. Hello? Tech Care Electronics Support, Alex. I'm here to help you troubleshoot your device today. Can you tell me what type of device you're having trouble with and what issue you're experiencing? Yeah, my Mac won't turn on. Okay, so your Mac won't turn on, got it. Um, can you tell me your name and do you know the exact model of your Mac? I mean, I could keep going, but I've been so impressed with the results this thing is creating and it's just saved me so much time. Obviously, this is not a complete solution. You're still going to have to get in and do some of the dirty work, but for a scaffolding that takes you 80% of the way there, this is incredible. And six months ago, I would have cried to see something like this. I have all of these special prompts in my community below. Now, when it comes to testing, you can actually adopt the same approach. If we go over to the simulation tab, you can add test cases like you normally do, where you put in a user prompt, but obviously that's time consuming as well. So what we can do, import a bunch of tests that Claude made. If you join the community, you can get access to it. But basically I can say, this is my industry that I'm in right now, tech support industry, and it will generate five most likely scenarios for this. Just go right over here and save this to disk. Import, just like so. And look at that, we have all of these test cases. Run tests, and now all five of these are running at the same time. So I appreciate you watching to the end of the video. If you got value from this, consider joining the community below. I'm obviously all of the templates, fast track way of building these agents are gonna be available there. Also, please subscribe to the channel. It really has been helping me grow. I love it. I love getting to make more videos like this and help people like you. I will see you in the next one. Tectomic, where AI finds its voice Come for the tech, stay for the transformation